Well, hello. Welcome back to A Tale Three Cabins. It's uh, mid-January. It's kind of chilly out, but we've got some sun for a change. This is about our second sunny day in about the last two months, and I wouldn't call it all that sunny. We've got some clouds up there. Today I want to talk a little bit about my trailer. So usually when I go on the road with JD, I get a lot of comments about my trailer, and I always look on the forums, Facebook page forums, tractor forums, and there's always questions about trailer size. What kind of trailer should I get for my John Deere 1025R and maybe various other tractors? Um, so I thought I'd talk a little bit about my experience with my trailer. And it's not necessarily going to be everybody's opinion. It's my opinion what I've done here. Um, I find that the more information that you get on YouTube about things, the, the better you are. So this is just my own little world about my tractor, my trailer, what I've done and what's been working for me and and maybe it'll answer some of the questions you have about getting a trailer for yourself with my first experience using a trailer is i had a 19 foot sea ray boat a little runabout and um, it had a trailer on it that i used to go to inland lakes and take it to lake erie and i used to tow it with a two-door jeep wrangler 1987 and i'll tell you the wrangler was a pretty short wheelbase for that type of trailer and I had some very interesting drives with it and always some white knuckle experiences taking it down the road. My first um, experience with a cargo type trailer was very gradual. When we bought the cabin in Southern Ohio, there was a four by six uh, landscape type trailer there that the gentleman left and I got plates for it and started using it. And I started using it to haul around my ATV um, if I needed to bring a lawnmower back and forth, a riding mower. Maybe I'd put firewood on it. And sometimes I would overload it as much I, as I could to get bring stuff down to the cabin because I still had my Jeep and I didn't have a pickup truck at the time. The next trailer I got was a 6x8. The 6x8 I got because I had two ATVs at the time and I was taking one or two back and forth from Southern Ohio back here, whether for maintenance or just using it to plow snow up here in the wintertime. Um, and my goal was to try to fit both of the ATVs on this trailer and it probably I shouldn't have but I did make a method to do it it looked awkward towing it back and forth I was never comfortable with it but I did have the means if I needed to bring both of them home or take them for maintenance or for trail riding that allows ATVs to be used when I got the tractor though I knew that that trailer was not going to handle having a tractor even if it was just a bare bones tractor so I started shopping around quite a bit I uh, was mostly looking on Facebook. I was trying to get myself a used trailer. At first I was looking at 16 feet and then um, I decided well maybe 18 feet is a good a good length for me to put a couple attachments and the tractor on board um, and then I ended up settling with 20. So this is 20 feet long and it includes the dovetail in the back and it's 20 feet by 82 inches. There's a lot of things you have to take into account. Exactly what are you going to be towing? Are you just bringing a tractor? Are you bringing attachments with it? What's the length when you have your longest attachment on there? For me, my longest attachment is definitely the brush hog. That one definitely sits in the back the most. So if you figure out the overall length that you have, plus you might want to put an attachment or two on the front or on the back, depending on how your weight distribution is, um, you kind of decide what you're going to use. I really didn't want to spend too much out of my pocketbook either, so I didn't want to go overkill with a trailer. Um, so this one is 7,000 pounds gross vehicle weight. It's got two axles on it. You definitely need two axles if you're going to get a, a tractor like the 1025R or larger. These axles are 3,500 pounds a piece. One of them has an electric brake on it, which you're definitely going to need this towing this type of weight. So I found this trailer on Facebook. It's brand new. It was actually manufactured in the state of Alabama, but there's a gentleman in Southern Ohio that will take road trips down there periodically and he'll bring back about five or six at a time and then he resells them. He gets them at a good discount wholesale price. Um, and for me, this trailer was $1,800, which I couldn't pass up. I was looking at used ones for that or even more than that. And to find a brand new one in this area uh, was pretty pricey. As trailers go, I wouldn't say that this is very heavy duty or a quality made trailer that you're going to spend five or six thousand dollars for. But for my needs, it's going to suit me just fine. 
Like I said, it's got 7,000 pounds gross vehicle weight. Mm -hmm. When you consider that the uh, 1025R weighs around 1,600 pounds, and if I have the uh, backhoe and the loader on, we're talking around 26, 2,700 pounds. I throw on a couple attachments up front, and maybe I'm up around 33, 34, 3,500 pounds. Um, that also gives me a little room to grow. So if I decide to go to the 2 Series and not the 2025R, but a 32 or 38R, um, that is going to be about a thousand pounds heavier than what I have. So it's going to still keep me in the 4,000 pound range, um, which I think is safe for this type of trailer. And I can still use it without having to worry about upgrading to a new trailer. Now some of the things that you're going to want to do when you get a new trailer is you're going to probably have to put some little add-ons to it. So one of the first things I did was uh, put on this little trailer box. Um, you can find them on Amazon, you can find them at Harbor Freight. They're not too terribly expensive and not too hard to install. And you can fill this up with all your straps, um, blocks if you need blocking. I have some trailer jacks that I'll store in here, lock it up. Um, so it does come in handy and it does keep a lot of the stuff out of the back seat of my pickup truck that I used to carry all that stuff before having this. Another thing that I went with was these weld-on trailer jacks. And I really like them instead of using blocks underneath the, the dovetail here when you have your ramps attached and you're loading your trailer. Um, these come in handy for, of course, loading your tractor. But also in the wintertime when I'm not using this trailer very much, I can lift this up with three points and get the wheels up off the ground. So I'm trying to save on some tire rot. I can also load the tractor without having it hooked up to my pickup truck or hooked up to a hitch which is convenient especially if i'm going to take this on the road and do a project with somebody uh, it takes a long time to hook up a lot of times i like to hook it up the night before so i can just get up and go where i'm going in the morning um, so that's very helpful if i still need to use my truck throughout the day but i want to take some time load my tractor up and have that ready to go if you don't want to bother with these trailer jacks and having to weld them down and everything, you really don't need them. Um, you're just going to need some blocks to put underneath here, underneath my dovetail. I've got it jacked up right now, so it's kind of high off the ground, but I think you get the idea of how that would work. First couple times with this trailer, I thought, oh, the dovetail is so low that I don't need to put any blocks under there. I could just drive it off, um, and that was not... <laughs> That shouldn't have been the case and that was a mistake by me um, to even attempt something like that because I could have done damage to the trailer and even scraped the bottom of the tractor. Very, very early on when I made some videos about my trailer, I was talking about strapping down the trailer and I got a comment um, from a gentleman that was wonderful because he uh, mentioned to purchase these stake pockets and they basically fit in the pocket of the trailer and they are somewhat adjustable and they're easy to install and they gave me a tie down point on multiple areas of the trailer I could pull this off and, and, and move it depending. Sometimes I have the tractor a little bit more forward depending on the configuration of attachments that I have and sometimes I have the tractor more in the back. Um, so I can move these forward and backwards. I bought four of them. I think I'm going to buy a couple more just to have them for other attachments. I was thinking about welding on tie downs or maybe drilling holes and then bolting on some tie downs. but. These make it a lot easier. And I'll leave a link down below if you're interested in those stake pockets. Tongue weight has always been an issue of how much weight you put on the tongue. And I've gotten uh, comments on that. Some people have mentioned you could buy special weights built into your, the ball of your hitch. And it'll tell you how many pounds you're pressing down on your tongue. Um, some people go by the look of your, your bed and your springs. And that's kind of what I do when I load a tractor. But if I'm loading the tractor by myself... Um, I really can't, I don't have that good a view unless somebody's watching. And that's going to vary too if I have the bed filled up with firewood or, or a good load in the bed. Um, so I don't want to overload my truck. But um, I would just recommend you, you take time and you practice a little bit. Um, you figure out um, your brake settings if you got a trailer brake on there. And then you're going to have different configurations. For instance, when I have 
the trailer with the backhoe on, I make a little mark. I know that's the sweet spot for loading my trailer and the tongue weight up front. When I have the brush hog on, I know that the back wheel, if I don't have any attachments up front, will rest perfectly on the edge of the dovetail. Um, and that's a good sweet spot for towing there. If I do have a couple attachments up front, let's say the box blade and maybe the tiller, you know, that eight, 800 pounds comes to the front, I have to back up the tractor a little bit and I know that that tire on the brush hog is gonna have to overhang a little bit. Um, and that's the sweet spot for that. So I think a little bit takes some practice. Um, I wouldn't like go on the road and go on a, a two or 300 mile jaunt with your new trailer and tractor right off the bat. Take a few little short trips, get the feel of what it feels like when you have it loaded and um, you know how your truck is responding. Um, if you think the steering is a little wonky or if you think it's just too light in the back and you can actually feel those things when you're driving. It is a delicate balance because you're always changing your load one way or another, but take the time, do a little trial and error, and hopefully you will um, not have to worry about a large error. I'll say one thing about this trailer is the ramps. The ramps slide into side here, and they are a bit of a pain to get in and out, and they are a little bit hard on the back to set up. Um, I do like some of those trailers that have the built-in ramps that just fold up. They're more of a um, heavier duty or trailer usually, um, but if you don't want to be lugging these ramps in and out all the time, um, that would be a better consideration than this. I tend to leave the ramps out when I'm done with it just because if the next time I use it, I'm going to have to pull them out anyways. And then when I load the tractor, I usually leave the ramps out and I put them underneath the tractor. I put one bungee cord on there to make sure they're not going to slide around or move around. Um, but I don't usually put them underneath very often. So I talked about the tie down points on the trailer itself, but when it comes to the tractor, that's always an issue. And I think it's an issue for a lot of people. Up front, I usually use um, part of the grill protector. And I do another strap on the other side. And for me, that's about my best bet. Um, I go over the, the loader, cause I'm usually carrying the loader with me. It doesn't have any sharp edges it usually does me just fine. I'm always more concerned about strapping down the back part of the tractor than the front part. So on the back, I'm lucky enough that I have the backhoe and I have uh, this attachment here for where the pins go. Now when the backhoe is attached, that's a totally different story for me strapping this thing down. And I'd love to hear those who that have backhoes, what are they used for a tie down point? So if you have a method with the backhoe on that does not use a third party add-on, but just exactly what came with your tractor, I'd love to hear your method of, of strapping on your tractor. I've got comments too, is um, when I load my tractor going up the ramps forward, a lot of people say that I should back up the ramps and put the tractor in reverse on the trailer. A lot of them say that when you're on the freeway, you take the chance of your hood popping up and doing damage to your hood. I've done it a little bit of both. Most of the time though, I do pull straight forward on there and don't have any issues. I'll say one of the biggest things for me having a 20 foot trailer is maneuvering this thing around my yard. Um, I'm not gonna be backing down my driveway. The driveway 700 feet long and the street is a little busy out front. So I need to pull in forward. And all together with the truck and the trailer, we're looking at you know close to 40 feet. So sometimes it's kind of hard to turn around. It's usually easier just to disengage the trailer. You're not going to lug this trailer around by yourself. Even with two people, it's pretty hard to budget. Um, so I usually connect it up to my tractor and I can rearrange it there. When I go out on the road, I kind of pre-plan where I'm going. So um, like for instance here, I know that this is a nice neighborhood. It's a block. I could just stay out in the street and then I can go around the block to get out. Certain streets are going to have issues with, um, you know, is the cul-de-sac a big enough turnaround for you to make that turn to get out? Um, is it a dead end street that doesn't have a cul-de-sac? When I'm down in southern Ohio, I can't make it up the hill with the trailer because it's going to scrape. So I have to leave it kind of down by the road in an area that I know I can turn it around and get it hooked back up to my truck. So this is just my opinion and this is just the methods that have worked out good for me. If you're looking at getting a tractor and you have a backhoe or a brush hog, um, I would go with a 20 footer. That way you've got some room to grow and everything's going to fit on there. If you got to put attachments on the front when you're hauling it, 
Um, you could get away with 16 if you don't have to worry about those items and maybe you're just going to have the loader and maybe a tiller. Uh, I've always wanted a little bit of room to grow because you know we always make decisions and down the road we decide we're going to make an upgrade. So if I do decide to upgrade to a 2 Series, I'm covered. It's still going to work with all the attachments I have and this trailer is still going to work. I appreciate everybody watching. I hope you enjoy these videos. Subscribe if you haven't. Click on the little bell when you want to know when a new one is coming out. And keep an eye on us. Take care, everybody.